Uh, I want to welcome you today. It's a, it's a great day. Uh, it's, um, uh, I want to thank everyone who's in the room today, uh, many of whom have been working uh, on this project with us uh, and together for, for several months now. And I want to thank those on the phone uh, and, and thank you all for your broader interest uh, in, in this topic. Uh, we're here today to talk about the DIRECT project uh, and uh, the, uh, the, what I think of as an amazing uh, accomplishment in two respects. First, uh, in terms of the content, of being able to have agreed upon protocols, standards, uh, and methods for using the internet to send patient information securely uh, from, uh, from point A to point B to meet the real life needs of providers today and build a foundation for interoperability and exchange for tomorrow. That's the first reason we're celebrating today. The second reason we're celebrating today is uh, really to, uh, to acknowledge and celebrate a new way of doing business, a new way of developing standards and promulgating standards and working in a truly collaborative public-private manner, um, uh, which I think this project exemplifies uh, and and uh, we, we hope by the end of, of uh, uh, today's, this hour, uh, everyone will have a sense of just, just how remarkable uh, this process has been, as well as the outcomes that we've achieved from it. Uh, this all derives, I think, uh, from our, our uh, and, and can be understood in, in light of our five plus one principles of how we operate uh, here at the Office of National Coordinator for Health IT. Uh, those five principles uh, plus one that really guide and, 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 and create a decision architecture for all of our policies and programs. And I'll just quickly uh, run through them as by way of, of, of explaining uh, this project. The first is open, democratic, transparent processes. Uh, this project was spawned uh, in response to, uh, and I think we'll hear, uh, in response to uh, uh, the process and, uh, of our open uh, Federal Advisory Committee uh, hearings where we were listening to the real life needs uh, of providers and responding to uh, the guidance and the policy guidance that the, the, the FAC of the Health IT Policy Committee set for us uh, here and said, these are the, 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 the policy uh, guideposts uh, and, and let's not let technology outstrip policy. This is where we, we can and should operate and these are the safe um, uh, uh, zones. And all of that discussion uh, from the very first day to the very last day took place uh, out in the open. Uh, the process of creating the specifications, reaching consensus was all done not in a back room, smoky or not, it was done on a wiki. Um, it's, it, it was, could not have been, I think, uh, a better example of our belief that the best government is the government that is most transparent. Our second principle is uh, what's it for? Keep our eye on the prize uh, and, and drive towards outcomes. And the, the outcome in this case uh, that we set our sights on uh, was to make care coordination, make the attainment of meaningful use of health information technology attainable uh, in stage one, that means by 2012. It's a, it, it was a big goal. It was a big, hairy, audacious goal. Uh, and we set it out there. Um, uh, and at the same time, uh, we said, yes, we want to have a uh, dramatically simplified way of achieving meaningful use of doing reporting to public health, to immunization registries, for example, as we'll hear today. Yes, we do want to have dramatically simpler, lower cost of interfaces for uh, lab uh, results, for uh, provider to provider communication, as we'll hear about, for um, uh, provider to patient communication, as we'll hear about. Um, but we also want to do it with our principle number three, feet on the ground. Let's start with what works today. We didn't go out there and invent some new set of protocols for doing this. Uh, the group said, what's out there today? What are other people using? What, is, what are the internet protocols? And let's build on what works today in a bold and transformative way, but let's build on what works. Let's not create whole out of whole cloth, uh, rip and replace what already exists. Let's build on the best of what is there today. Our fourth principle is innovate. Innovate our way, uh, out-innovate every other country, and use that, uh, use the markets, use the, the energy, use the creativity of private industry in doing so. Uh, government partnering with uh, industry. And again, the, when the call went out from 
uh, the Office of National Coordinator that said, we want to reach this big, hairy, audacious goal. We are inviting you to come and work with us. The response was incredible from the market. We had the largest ambulatory and inpatient electronic health record companies. We had some very significant internet and technology companies. We had the biggest lab companies in the country. We had networks. We had health information exchange vendors. We had states. And we had some small vendors, some small groups who never, in, in the usual processes, would never uh, have, have participated in a process like this. But they really felt that they could have an ownership stake in this, that they could own the process. This is not you know, coming to, to some meeting where you talk about things and then you know, the, 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 the government bureaucrats take over. This really was your process, and we uh, benefited, all of us, I think, the country will benefit tremendously from the, 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 the public-mindedness um, and as well as the uh, coordinated, directed, um, directed, so to speak, um, uh, focus uh, that, that industry uh, put into solving this problem in a very short time frame. Our fifth principle is, while you use the markets, watch out for the little guy. Make sure that whatever we develop, whatever policies we have, whatever programs we have, uh, don't leave um, anybody behind. That we really have uh, systems that can be open to all, not just the biggest players. And that, I think, was, was important not only in the process, but also in the outcome, so that the standards that are developed are not standards that only the largest companies, the most uh, sophisticated providers, but even the little guy, even the solo practitioner in the storefront in Harlem could use to communicate, to send information to public health, to communicate with their patient securely. And that brings us to the plus one principle. The final principle is whatever we do to put the patient in the center. It doesn't just mean having the patient be in the center when it comes to being able to receive information and be the medium for their own information exchange. It also means putting their interests in the center, thinking about what we do in a patient-centric way and thinking about the, what's in the best interest of the patient, including privacy and security. Everything we did was focused on making sure that as information is exchanged, it is secure, much more secure than it is today with faxes, with letters, with communications that exist, that are currently happening. Let's make it more secure, more private, uh, and let's put the patient's interests in the center. So with that, I want to uh, introduce uh, the man who has given us these principles, the man who has embodied um, uh, these, uh, uh, these, these uh, uh, ideals for us, this vision for us, who set in motion uh, so much of uh, what has happened incredibly in the past 18 months, uh, Dr. Uh, David Blumenthal. Thank you. Thank you, Farzad. Um, I'm not sure Farzad actually introduced himself to this audience, uh, but uh, he has been uh, just an incredible leader in his own right, uh, in terms not only with this project, but with everything that the Office of the National Coordinator has done, and even with the uh, development of the high tech legislation that enabled uh, whatever we've accomplished and that has set a vision for the health information. Uh, system that this country uh, is developing. So let me add uh, my thanks to all of those who are in attendance and uh, especially to those of you in the front row and your many colleagues listening on the, uh, uh, on the phones uh, who participated in creating the uh, direct project that we are discussing and announcing uh, today. Uh, it does have many of those attributes that we think are uh, are just the kind of attributes that are going to lead to success in the project that we are broadly undertaking. And that larger project, of course, is in the words of uh, the legislation that authorizes the Office of the National Coordinator to create a nationwide interoperable private and secure electronic health information system. Uh, even that set of words has a kind of numbing quality <laughs> to it. Uh, and so um, trying to think of analogies here, uh, if, if, that high, if that system is a bridge uh, over a river, 
then what we are announcing today is a huge pillar for that bridge uh, or a element of the span because it is going to be the one of the elementary methods of achieving interoperability, of letting information travel. And if you talk to people, normal people, like the kind of people in this room, like ourselves as patients, one of the things that they most want from their healthcare system is for their doctors and nurses who are located in different places to be able to share what they know about them, to be able to share the x-rays, the laboratory results, the notes, so that they don't always have to fill out that clipboard, they don't always have to repeat what drugs they're on, that somehow the healthcare system retains what the healthcare system knows about them. The NHIN Direct Project is our first, not our first, but an, an essential element in that making that possible, making that real, and making it real not just for big, sophisticated healthcare systems that have hot and cold running health information technology support, but for, as far as Odd said, the little guy, the solo practitioner, the storefront, the critical access hospital, uh, basically anyone in the world who can use the internet. That's been a goal that was set for us. Uh, it was set for us uh, by uh, PU on the outside, people talking with us, and it was brought to fruition by and encapsulated by Farzad and Anish, who you will hear about shortly, and Todd Park, uh, and many others, and made to happen also with, it, with the leadership of those in the audience and in the front row, as well as by Doug Fritzma, our Director of Interoperability and Standards, and Aaron Malik, who has been his right-hand person in making this uh, a reality. So what, uh, what to me is most gratifying about the role I play is when I can see a direct connection between what we're doing and how a patient's care may change. And the discussion we're having today is very, very intimately and directly related to that changing reality it will make a difference, and it will make a difference for individual patients and the people who care for them uh, every day for the future until we get to the ultimate and complete health information exchange capability that we are also working on through uh, other standards and interoperability work. Just to let you all know, if you haven't uh, heard us talk about it already, uh, we are very pleased so far at the progress we're making in the general project toward realizing the vision of meaningful use and interoperability and health, health information adoption, electronic health record adoption. Uh, we have vigorous enrollment of providers with our regional extension centers. Uh, a, up to close to 40,000 already providers have registered to be helped on the way to meaningful use uh, in our regional extension centers. We have over 14,000 providers uh, initiating registration to become meaningful users under the CMS Electronic Health Record Incentive Program. Uh, we have thousands of new graduates of health IT training coming out of our new community college programs this spring. Uh, we have 17 Beacon communities funded and organizing to improve the health of their own communities in, in uh, places scattered from Hawaii uh, to Rhode Island. Uh, across the United States. So uh, we're very pleased with where we are, but I'm especially pleased that we are going to see the fruit of our work in a project today that is simple and elegant and very meaningful for patients and their caretakers. Thanks very much. All right. All right, I'm now going to introduce... Um, the noisy guy on the stage there, Anish Chopra, United States Chief Technology Officer, the first to hold that role. He serves as Assistant to the President and Associate Director for Technology uh, within the Office of Science and Technology Policy. He works every day to advance 
the President's technology agenda by fostering new ideas and encouraging government-wide coordination to help the country meet its goals from job creation to reducing health care costs to protecting the homeland. He also serves on the Health IT Standards Committee, which is charged with making recommendations uh, to the National Coordinator on standards, implementation specifications, and he is a tireless creator, friend, fire starter. Can I come? You can come. All right, good. Thank you. All right. Hey. Cheers. I got to tell you, this is a very exciting day uh, for us at the White House. We have a senior staff meeting every morning with all the major uh, uh, leaders in the uh, President's cabinet, uh, his uh, senior staff. And I was very excited to share the news, uh, it wasn't today, I did it yesterday, to share the news about this uh, announcement that was pending because uh, it's a very, very important topic for the President and I think a nice and important milestone. I like your bridge pillar analogy, David. I think I might borrow heavily from that. Let me just lift up for a moment before I share uh, and pass the baton to our, uh, to our next uh, presenters to say just a word about the context of where we are in the President's State of the Union, the emphasis on innovation, education, and competitiveness, and to kind of bring that back to the fruits of this action that we're celebrating today. Yesterday, was today Wednesday? Monday. Monday was a pretty exciting day for us at the White House. We launched an initiative called Startup America. It was an initiative that thankfully doesn't require taxpayer-funded uh, resources or support. It's really built on the spirit of collaboration and uh, partnership that you see uh, exacerbated in today's particular case study. But the concept behind Startup America was very simple. As we move to achieve the vision the President laid out for us for a 21st century economy, we've got to tap into the entre entrepreneurial spirit and the energy of the American people in every corner of the country. And it will take a national campaign to get there. Not a government campaign, not a Washington-centric effort, but a national campaign. Which is why we asked Steve Case, uh, many of you know, uh, was the co-founder of AOL, to lead this effort and to launch a movement of other entrepreneurs and accelerators and, and organizations committed to making this a reality. The uh, White House shared that it was going to do what it could to simplify, to manage its relationship with the entrepreneurial community and announced a series of initiatives. But the theme in the announcement on Monday was that we've got to do a better job connecting with this notion of entrepreneurship. Operating in Washington used to be defined by budget cycles or new laws or congressional action. And that was sort of the definition of an output. I think what you're learning today is that we can actually think a bit more nimbly that when we leverage the concept of government as convener, we can accomplish a tremendous amount and to do so outside of those traditional policy domains. That's the concept of what we're hearing and celebrating today, was the principles of startup in policymaking. Now, let's just take a few minutes on the origin, and then we'll come back to how we're celebrating where we are today. There are lots of discussion. Todd and I actually were in Boston, um, I don't know, 2009, eight, I don't know, the dates are all off. It was a long time ago, it felt like, engaging in a conversation with uh, thought leaders from around the country to listen, literally listen. Look, we're relatively new to our jobs. We want to engage. How can we be productive and helpful? And we heard a lot about the importance of the internet and the possibilities of taking advantage of what we learned in the creation of the internet economy and how it might improve for healthcare. And it was just a conversation. Not even a month after that, David was very important in calling on hearing from the, the folks on the ground in setting policy. I got to give, I give David a lot of credit for a lot of things. The guy's an awesome rock star and a leader and a guy that I just think has just done a tremendous job for the president, for the country. But his notion that we have to hear from the ground as we make policy, I thought was just a really thoughtful addition to the discussion. So our standards committee convened an implementation hearing at David's request to listen to physicians, providers, uh, technology companies and say, what is it that's happening on the ground that will influence what we're doing? And I remember Dr. Tripp, we had a physician who, who was one of our, our, our uh, uh, testifiers, 
who had written testimony, everybody does, you got to read, you know, this is my formal remarks, thank you very much, let's move on to the next conversation. But in the Q&A, the dialogue that took place, he shared this anecdote that really spoke to a problem that we didn't have a solution for, and that was literally a patient of his was moving to Arizona from Northern Virginia. He was asked by the patient if the records could follow electronically. By luck, the physician in Arizona had the exact same software package that he had, but there was no button, Glenn hadn't invented a button yet, that would allow you to, I'm teasing on you, that wasn't you, uh, to, to, email, uh, to email the record to the colleague. Now, it turned out that he describes in testimony this convoluted process where they exported the record, attached it to the public internet email system, transmitted it, imported the record, and it actually worked. But while he was describing this, there was sort of gasps of horror in the room, HIPAA, security, hello, hello. And he accepted and acknowledged that you guys got to get to work on this. This shouldn't be that hard. And in a sense, the concept of the, the startup, the need for a startup in this space was born. So we thought, how do you marry the entrepreneurial energy of what we see in Silicon Valley and in Boston and other communities with this convening role we seem to have in Washington? And can A and B combine in the person that is Aryan Malik to make such an enterprise uh, real and thrive? And it starts with the need to have an Aryan Malik at the helm with support from our, our policy shop in Washington. And you've heard all the benefits that have come out of this startup that didn't exist on paper when we took office, wasn't enumerated explicitly in the High Tech Act or the Recovery Act, and it was definitely not something that was in a projected budget plan from 2004 going forward into whatever future years. It was birthed, didn't need a lot of resources, and it, and it, and it took off like a, like a rocket. That's the reason why I'm so pleased to be here today on behalf of the President and the White House in talking about the need not just for the content of this project, which you've heard a lot about, but the method by which our government had acted. It was the president's first full day in office where he wrote his memorandum to all executive branch agencies on his principles for government in the memo we call our open government uh, effort. And the president said in his very first memo that the government should be more transparent, more participatory, and more collaborative. I thank David and his leadership because the direct project was a three for three. And it's actually a four for three because the results are going to be tremendous for the American people. Thank you for this. To hear a real life story of how this actually happened, I get to, ha not, not far as that, I'm going to pass the baton to actually tell the reality of this story. We've got a couple of our private sector partners to talk about what's happened in reality. The very first uh, uh, successful transmission of information using the protocol was done by our friends at Vision Share. Please welcome Mark Briggs to describe that story and we'll move on from there. Thank you. Mark, make it happen. Purple Pie Day. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. Hello, I'm Mark Briggs, the CEO of VisionShare, a 10-year-old healthcare company based in Minneapolis that many of you have probably never heard of. Over these last several years, we have been working in the background, connecting thousands of hospitals with their patients, thousands of skilled nursing facilities with clinics, and tens of thousands of other providers across the country with our largest healthcare payer, Medicare. By earning the trust of healthcare providers every day, we've built the largest web-based secure healthcare network in the country, which now facilitates millions of transactions every day with CMS. We've long believed that leveraging the internet to facilitate secure healthcare communication would foster innovation in our industry and immediately shared the administration's vision of the direct project as a potential game changer for all of us in this industry. Over the past several months, we've been pleased to provide leadership and expertise in several of the project's work groups. And as Anise mentioned, we've enabled the first direct transaction between uh, the Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis with the Minnesota Department of Public Health. We'd like to... This applause should go to both of those organizations and their leaderships where we'd like to extend our thanks uh, in embracing direct and choosing to partner with VisionShare. 
The first direct transaction was the secure exchange of an, of an immunization record, which was an important first step in the project, though doesn't begin to scratch the surface of where this will take us. Much like the early days of the web, by enabling easy and secure communication over the Internet with every member of the healthcare community, the real value will come in the emergent properties of the system. At a time where all of us are concerned about affordable access to health care, caring for patients has become more complex. More visits revolve around chronic disease conditions like cancer versus episodic visits like a broken arm. We are asking our health care providers to care for all of us over many different encounters and do so as affordably as possible. This means providers will need the ability to access the complete set of health care information across the system for their patient versus the fragmented record that is being used to treat today. One of the emergent properties of a truly connected health care community is comprehensive clinical awareness of where different parts of a patient's record are across the system and the ability to easily and securely share that information with one another. This means better patient care, fewer medical errors, happier and healthier patients, but it also means fewer duplicative tests, lower costs, shorter length of stays, and more efficient care delivery. In other words, more affordable, better health care for all of us. Each of us at VisionShare is passionate about this transformation in health care and excited about the new care delivery models being innovated by our providers all across the country. We are big believers in the direct project as an important catalyst to facilitate this change and to give back and to show the support that we have received by many in this room. We are announcing today that VisionShare is making an investment of up to $50 million over the next year or so to provide the ability for all physicians, hospitals and other health care providers across the country to join the network and transact over direct. Wow. <laughs> on, on February 21st at the HIMSS uh, convention in Orlando, we will be sharing more details about this investment as well as making several other pretty big announcements. Please stay tuned for some exciting news coming uh, in just a few weeks. Thank you, Anish, Dr. Blumenthal, Todd. Farzad and all the rest for the support you had of Vision Share and of Direct. We couldn't be more excited to play a role in this terrific project. Thank you. Thank you. That is great. Uh, next up, Glenn Tellman, who is Chief Executive Officer of Allscripts, um, and he joined uh, Allscripts as the CEO to lead the company's transition into the healthcare information sector. And he has led the company to become the leading provider of uh, clinical software connectivity solutions uh, that uh, healthcare stakeholders use every day to improve the quality and reduce the cost of healthcare. Glenn. Great. Go, Glenn, go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <for that. clears throat> Well, let me begin, uh, first of all, by thanking uh, David, Anish, and Farzad for your work, for the team's work, and Mark. We have 180,000 physicians who I'm sure would love to take advantage, so we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about partnering on that $50 million. Um, but at Allscripts, we think we're at the beginning of the single fastest transformation of any industry in the history of the United States. The passage of the High Tech Act, Dr. Blumenthal's leadership on the Meaningful Use Incentive Program, have both served to increase health IT adoption to rates that we haven't seen before. And we, ex we expect that adoption to actually continue and accelerate as people see both the benefits of using electronic health records as well as their peers moving successfully to use those records. The next step already under discussion among, health, among the Health IT Policy Committee is moving to the second stage of the program and raising the standards at both hospitals and at physician practices, while on the other hand, at the same time, expanding the efforts to exchange information between healthcare professionals. Our vision, and you've heard it described today, is to create a connected community of health, not healthcare, but health. And so it's appropriate that we're participating today in the Office of the National Coordinators Initiative to launch adapt, adoption of new technologies that will lead to better connectivity between physicians and also between physicians and their patients. We believe that the direct project is a very significant and important step forward. 
by connecting healthcare providers to each other and to their patients are in tech terms connecting and creating the infrastructure necessary for active, robust, and clinically relevant information exchange. We're helping to build these connected communities that can create, collaborate, and innovate. That's what we see in so many different communities across the rest of the environment. In fact, every industry except healthcare, we're seeing the impact of information technology to build these collaborative, creative, and innovative communities that we're talking about. And today, I think the ONC is confirming once again that healthcare also needs to be connected. Ultimately, HIT and the direct project exist only as a means to an end. Healthcare, we believe, is an information business. And by connecting the dots, or in this case, connecting the computers, we think you're going to get better, more consistent, higher quality care, and you're going to get that care at a lower cost. So for patients, wherever they're treated, they're going to see better care. And the best example of that is that this technology that we're talking about today isn't exclusive to the high end of healthcare. In fact, we're very focused on rural areas, on the underserved in major cities, at FQHCs, federally qualified health centers, in financially challenged community hospitals. I was at one yesterday in New York City, and they said thank you for the efforts to bring the technology again and make it affordable. And last but not least, to independent physician practices, which represent about half of the physician practices in this country, the one and two and three doc practices. They all need electronic health records, and they all need connected electronic health records. So physicians will tell you at the end of the day that healthcare is an information business. They need information to make the right diagnosis, to make the right treatment decisions, and then to monitor their patients and to see if there's a need for further intervention. And information, we believe, gives power to those who treat and care for all of us as patients. So it's also true that today very little electronic information exchange occurs. And in fact, the primary care physician who just diagnosed your hypertension is very unlikely to be able to communicate with the endocrinologist who you meet with later in the week to talk to you about your diabetes. And that information is both critical and not provided today. If it is provided, it's not generally provided in a useful, digestible way. It's provided by faxes, as far as Odd was talking about. And again, the message is that has to change. Can you imagine in this day and age, if we went to our friends and family or to our kids and asked them to stop communicating using computers and use faxes versus text and email? I mean, I, don't, I think I can see from the smiles that we know what the reaction would be. So we need a simple electronic means of communication that allows you to do attachments and gets the process started. And the beauty, I think, of the direct project is its simplicity. Because direct, when paired with the increased adoption of electronic health records, will result, we believe, in increased patient care better care, higher quality care, delivered by what we think of as the best physicians and caregivers in the world. And that's the physicians who will use this project. So let me just comment um, on one specific project that we have underway. The beauty of this has been that um, the ONC has collaborated, they've, they've forced, and I use that word with quotes around it, um, all of the vendors in the community to work together. And so I'm pleased that at Albany Medical Center, where Allscripts is engaged, we're engaged not just with one of our key clients, but we're engaged with Siemens and with NextGen and with MedAllies, competitors, but we're all working together to deliver this better care. And under the leadership of George Hickman, who's CIO of Albany Medical Center, for the first time, we are starting to exchange information that will actually reduce um, medical errors and allow for more collaboration. So in closing, I want to reiterate that on behalf of the industry, we support the direct project, which is setting new standards, solid standards, understandable standards for a unique public-private partnership. 
And we're committed to these open standards, and we believe that ultimately these standards will lead to better care. So again, my thanks to the group on the stage, to all of you in the audience who've been a part of the project. Thanks very much. Next up, we have none other than Sean Nolan, Distinguished Engineer and Chief Architect for Microsoft Health Solutions. Uh, I want to say Sean has been as passionate about this project as anybody, except maybe Arian Malik. <laughs> and he has brought, this has not just been uh, something that, uh, that, that he thought was good business. He has believed in this as this is, um, this is important for health and this is why uh, he comes to work, I think, every day and works after work and on the weekend and in the evenings on, on this project. Um, at, at Microsoft, uh, Sean is uh, responsible for product development and operations for the company's enterprise and consumer healthcare platforms, uh, Microsoft Amalga and Microsoft Health Vault. So I am super excited to be here. I, uh, I think it will show, and we'll see how that works out. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Microsoft has been part of the direct project since the beginning, and it was a real special thing, observation that we made. It seemed like there was this perfect storm of a really motivated HHS who was super excited, and, and these folks here, and a whole bunch of private sector folks who came together and were sit really committing time and energy and mind share to this process. And, and third, this observation that, boy, you know, maybe internet technology, proven secure internet technology, really could be brought to bear in a real way on this problem um, so that we could deliver better care uh, maybe a little bit faster. And when we went and we started talking to people about this project, it was clear that we kind of were on to something with this idea, you know. The idea that direct exchange, that email, these concepts are things that people understood. They were things that they valued immediately when they heard about them. And they were things that they could understand working into their daily lives, their workflows, what they do every day. And that idea of being part of daily life is something we at Microsoft and Health Solutions are really trying to put forth with Health Vault in particular. It's a free online asset that anybody, any citizen of the country can use to collect, manage, share, and, and, and take advantage of their health information um, in order to be more engaged patients. But in order for that to work, it has to be part of their daily lives. And that's the big challenge with health IT. When the data is not moving, when you can't get that sense, it's hard for it to be part of your daily life. And so there was this incredible marriage with Direct that got us just super excited. And so what I'm really pleased, and uh, uh, it's been a, a long time coming to talk about and announce from Microsoft, is that actually next week, um, every Health Vault account will be automatically wired up for direct access. So, <laughs> And I hope, Umesh, that you're listening to that applause, because it's all about <laughs> one guy at Microsoft. You know, um, and what that means is every citizen will have the ability to actually get that data, a copy of their electronic health information, into their own hands to use as a more activated patient, as a more empowered patient. And that's super exciting, because we're not just talking about text messages, although that's actually an important part of it, but also structured information. Um, so if there is a visit summary that comes along with that data or immunization data, it can come in, it can be integrated into that record and then used with any of the dozens of existing Health Vault applications around emergency preparedness, around immunization reminders, around medication interaction tracking, really start to be used to get people engaged. And we're already starting to use this new connectivity with a number of partners. You heard from uh, VisionShare just a minute ago, and one of the really neat things is that in addition to actually sending that information about immunizations to public health, there's going to be the opportunity to share it with the individual patient and citizen as well. So you think about that new parent starting that immunization re uh, record for their family, it's really, really exciting. And MedPlus, through their Care360 application, is actually leveraged direct in Health Vault as part of their recently got um, stage one meaningful use certification. And what's really kind of neat about that is that it shows that these multiple institutions and multiple parties can actually collaborate against these higher order principles and goals that we've set out for each other. So I hope we're going to see a whole ton of that. And the nature of these direct exchanges really do lend themselves to being part of 
daily life. And so as you go forward, I think you're going to see them pop up in all kinds of places where maybe we haven't traditionally thought about health IT before. You know, from Microsoft, we have our Amalga product. We have our online office suite, um, uh, Office 365. And there's all kinds of places where this kind of connectivity can really start to happen. So I just, you know, before I blather and repeat myself a little bit too much, um, I'm really thankful to all these folks, to Arian, uh, to Doug, and, and Todd. Um, of making this possible because it is going to be really meaningful, it is really exciting, and I'm proud to be part of it. So thanks. All right. Next up, Dr. Al Pierini, who is a practicing family physician in private practice. He also is president and CEO of the Rhode Island Primary Care Physician Corporation. Al? So it's a real pleasure to be here. I happen to be the little guy they've been talking about. <laughs> From Rhode Island, we're uh, a group of 160 primary care physicians who in 2003 decided we didn't like the EHRs that were out there, so we decided to develop our own. And we did that and became CCHIT certified in 2006, and we're about to uh, go national with a web-based version. Uh, it's primary care oriented, which we think is extremely important for what we are trying to do here today. Um, uh, basically, uh, the importance of primary care uh, as a foundation for this type of data exchange is, I, I can't say enough about it. Um, we have, um, uh, of the independent primary care physicians in the United States, about 85 to 90 percent are in groups of five or less. So we can listen to the, what the Kaisers have to say and what the larger groups have to say, but uh, as you've already clearly said, we have to listen to the little guy because that's where it's all happening. So when we were approached in the fall to get involved in this project, we were ecstatic. So I, I really want to thank ONC and I want to thank uh, Laura Adams of the Rhode Island Quality Institute for letting us be a part of this. And um, after a lot of work, we were able to put together a, uh, uh, a system where we can do some, uh, a, a brand new uh, innovative way of uh, communicating physician to physician. You know, the the, uh, the terms meaningful use and uh, the levels of, of uh, achievement in uh, NCQA for patient-centered medical home are all very important. But the bottom line is uh, we need to do health care better. And as a physician, that is by far the most important thing that, that we do. That's the end result of what this is all about, is improving the delivery of health care and therefore improving the health of Americans. Uh, right now, I don't think we're doing a real good job at it, but what's happening in, in forums like this is, uh, is clearly going to change that for the better. Um, the other uh, great thing is how the government has come as a convener uh, to, to assist uh, large groups and small groups to achieve this. Um, so ju just to get to the point here, um, we, we developed our EHR in 2003. We started developing interfaces with labs and uh, 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 radiology centers. Uh, then we had this uh, nice EHR in our offices that had all this data. And then now uh, what do we do with it? We can't really exchange it with anybody. Um, and uh, so then a lot of different companies were trying to do uh, systems within their, uh, within their uh, uh, platform, which wasn't scalable to other platforms. And then along comes uh, and and direct, uh, which was incredibly refreshing. As soon as we saw the specs, we said, "This is it. We want to be a part of this. This is awesome." So uh, we got our crew together with uh, we, with uh, we got some consultants involved, and uh, just this Monday we were uh, uh, the first um, the first transmission uh, in the country to. I actually sent a referral with a CCR from my office to a gastroenterologist's office. It was encrypted, it was secure, and it, was, uh, and it happened flawlessly. So we were extremely thrilled about that. Yeah. So for us to accomplish that, you know, in our little, in our little sphere, uh, and, and to, for me to be here today is, uh, is just incredible. I mean, I, I get to meet the rock star of HIT, Dr. <laughs> Blumenthal. I mean, this is, I don't know, this is unbelievable. Um, pinch me, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, I need your autograph later, okay? Um, <laughs> 
But anyway, we, we clearly are very much in favor of what's going on with the direct project. The, the, the direct project is uh, it, it, it's looking like it's, a, it's creating a standard and it's creating a standard that is scalable uh, across the country to all vendors, which is what, which is what we need to accomplish. So uh, we want you to know that we are there for you. Anything else we can do, uh, we want to be involved in this process as possible. It's extremely exciting. And um, that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, finally, before we, uh, we close out and, and take some uh, questions, we have a rare treat to also welcome Todd Park, Chief Technology Officer for the Department of Health and Human Services, who not only has been an entrepreneur uh, on the outside, he's been an entrepreneur on the inside. And uh, he, has, uh, he has exemplified and led and motivated and inspired us in HHS to be as innovative as we can be, as nimble as we can be, as agile as we can be, and, uh, and we love him for it. Thanks, Todd. It's so fantastic to be here. I have to apologize. My voice is very raspy. I'm uh, actually recovering from an illness, but, but wild horses could not. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, yeah, dude, so sorry. But wild horses cannot drag me away from this day. I'm so incredibly excited. So forgive my Marlon Brando impression, but I just want to help celebrate the, the fantasticness that's actually being unleashed here today. I think as you've seen from the speakers today, there, there's never been a better time to be an innovator at the intersection of care delivery and IT. It's such an exciting time for all of us who want to leverage the power of IT and data to make lives better, to make care better in America. And, and I think the direct product is a classic, fantastic, soon to be legendary example of how the public and private sectors can come together and a collaborative entrepreneurial explosion of mojo to improve and advance healthcare in America, where the government basically identifies in half the country an issue and convenes people to try to solve it. The government says, look, we've got this problem, right? Doctors and other agents of the patient need to be able to send information from point A to point B securely. Can you help with that? And the private sector responds, saying, hell yes, we can help with that, <laughs> and comes together in an incredible, uh, incredible effort to, in record time, create simple, beautiful standards, really identifying existing standards to make that happen and promulgate a way to make that roll and then get production transactions to happen again in, in record time. And the bottom line is that this, this explosion of mojo isn't theoretical, it's not academic, it's not some kind of tech activity happening somewhere in the cloud with no impact. It's going to, bottom line, enable patient data to flow where it needs to go, which will improve care and save lives uh, in countless dimensions and in countless different ways. So just want to, on behalf of the Secretary, on behalf of the Deputy Secretary, on behalf of America, Thank the direct project community, those on stage, uh, those uh, listening, uh, those who weren't able to make it because they're too busy programming new ways to use direct. Uh, but I just want to applaud them for all of your success, uh, for launching the rocket ship, uh, and uh, may the force continue to be with you.